Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Between the Vines. I'm Jennifer Phillips Russo, the Viticulture Extension Specialist for the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. And this podcast is brought to you by Cornell University and Penn State University. Our team is made up of both land grant universities, and we both handle New York and PA for our growers in our region. So today with me, I have Megan Luke and Herman Vargas, who are the newest members of the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. Thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks for having us, Jen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Get used to it, folks, because this is going to be um, the new norm with the three of us on here talking about our program and what happens in our area. And speaking of new norm, we are hoping that it gets even newer as of this week. We have a very busy week going on for the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. My old co-host, you may remember, Kevin Martin, left to join the grower side of things. So we have actively been trying to fill his position with candidate searches and interviews. And tomorrow we have one of the seminars coming in for that position who will, the candidate will tour the region with us and then give a seminar to a select group of growers and industry representatives. And we're really hopeful that we can find a successful candidate to fill that position and join us on these podcasts after these next couple of weeks. So after that, this week has been candidate search, new people on podcasting. Also, we have our advisory committee coming up, and that is a meeting that's happening this week where we have a group of stakeholders, both growers and industry representatives, sit down with our team so that we don't just decide what we think you all should hear and what would be helpful for you. We get input, and they help direct our programming for the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. That's also happening happening this week, and one that is usually a part or an outcome of that particular meeting is the spray programming that we provide for, this is our fourth year, I think, now in a row. Everybody has found it extremely helpful, and it is an online format. You can register for it at C, I'm sorry, I never get that correct, and I even told the group before we got started that that was going to happen, at lergp.cce. Dot cornell dot edu. If you scroll down on that landing page, on, you will find under events that it is the 2024 LERGP spray program. I know it seems a little misleading because we are in 2023, but we call it that because we are hoping that it helps you prepare for your 2024 growing season and your spray program. We wanted to do it early enough so that you could have the option to hear research-based solutions as to what a program might entail or look like for you. So you can do that before ordering your chemicals. That is on December 5th, 2023. And I believe it's Tuesday. Am I correct, you guys? It is, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Tell me if I'm right or wrong, because I honestly don't know. I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Tuesday yeah, that Tuesday. is Tuesday, Tuesday the 5th. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Tuesday, December 5th. We are having that. It starts at 9 a.m. and it goes to 11.30 a.m. We have been approved for credits for both PDA and New York. And I know that core credits is a big thing for PDA, for Pennsylvania growers. So I will let Megan tell you a little bit about what you can expect from this program in regards to credits for Pennsylvania. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so we have applied for for core credits as well as category for some of the other talks. Um, it is worth mentioning um, there is a registration fee for this program, but we do feel that it is uh, very valuable given how many questions that we field. I mean, I can really only speak for myself, but I know that a very high percentage of the questions that I get asked uh, throughout the growing season are directly related to spray programs um, and the newest research uh, and recommendations, especially in this day and age of supply chain issues and shortages, um, which we had all hoped would have resolved themselves um, post pandemic seem to still have some uh, lingering after effects in our lives. Um, I know last year, some of the new, as uh, Brian Head would call them, the Cadillac materials, some of those newer modes of action, um, there was some difficulty sourcing them um, through some distributors. So we really wanted to get that info in your hands as early as possible. Uh, so 
that you can get those orders in and not not risk being short materials um, when the time comes. So just wanted to put a little plug in there for that. Um, in terms of, of, of what I'm going to be presenting on, um, so I've, I've gone a little bit back and forth on what format I wanted to use or what I wanted to present on. Um, the biggest concerns right now have been the EPA's new labeling requirements specific to herbicides. Um, and the mitigation strategies that they're requiring for the use of not only herbicides, but some fungicides and insecticides as well. Uh, these are label changes that are going to be occurring on new registrations and re-registrations of existing uh, chemistries. And it's going to have an impact on growers and on how you keep records in regards to your pesticide applications. Um, so I'll be going over some of uh, some of what those changes are and some of the ways uh, to meet these new requirements, um, as well as an overview of the Bulletin Live 2 website. Um, the EPA is really putting a lot of effort into hinging this new information on this very specific website, uh, which is unfortunately somewhat cumbersome. Um, they, if you have a tutorial on how to use a website, you know it isn't as streamlined as it probably could be. Um, and given that they're putting on the labels the requirement to check this website um, in some cases, I thought it would be prudent to do an overview of how to actually utilize and access this information regarding the newest EPA bulletins. Um, so I'll be doing a little overview of that, talking about the EPA's new regulations um, on label requirements, and then talking about mitigation strategies. So the bulletins in some cases for some chemistries that they've already done the re-registration process on uh, actually have bulletins with very specific mitigation practices that you need to have in place. Some of them require uh, very specific types of spray equipment, uh, buffer zones, things like that. But the way that they're leveraging these new label requirements for herbicides is that you'll have a choice of mitigation measures that you can employ to meet the label requirements um, that you can choose from a menu. Now, this part isn't live yet on their website, uh, but we are aware through some of the webinars that they've hosted of what some of these mitigation strategies might look like. Um, so that's kind of a good segue into and some additional programming I have coming up uh, for the coming year regarding uh, pesticide sprayer calibration, drift reduction, and reduction of off-site uh, target applications. So I'll have I'll go over a little bit, you know, what the current guidelines are in terms of frequency of calibration. Um, what to do in terms of nozzle selection and ways that we can use these strategies to meet the mitigation requirements um, that are going to be new to labels coming into the next year. Uh, so that's going to be really what what the core is going to be um, for and just the general guidelines is, you know, label requirements, label is the law, what are these new changes going to look like, what the effects are going to be, um, and how we can meet these requirements without having to add a lot of additional labor hours or cost to our general operations. Um, so that's what you have to look forward to for my talk. <laughs> it's about as dry as it gets. It's a good thing we got some snow recently. <laughs> no, it's not dry, actually, because this is, excuse me, really important for everything that's coming up. <clears throat> excuse me. I have a frog in my throat. <clears throat> With the um, EPA's Endangered Species Act. So I was on a meeting yesterday with our um, the Cornell program working team for the great, great program. And Lynn Sinoski, who is our weed scientist at Cornell University, not grape specific, all commodities, was talking about how very important these bulletin lives are going to become and that how people definitely need to become aware with how to use them and what information to find there. So what Megan's going to be talking about at this particular is very timely and important to what you need to know. This is in regards to herbicides that are coming out this spring, but they are proposing that in the, what you say, August of 2024 is the targeted date for the fungicide re regulations that are going to come out as well. So this is the beginning yeah. of what you're going to need to know. So definitely tune in to listen to Megan's on our December 5th spray program. Thank you, Megan. Uh, before, Megan, do you want anything to add anything to that? Because I just wanted to emphasize those bulletins and how important they are. 
Yeah, um, no, I mean, as, as far as it goes, yes, uh, the, the fungicides and then they plan to follow with insecticides as well. However, it is worth noting that specific insecticides and fungicides that are considered higher risk already have Bulletin Live um, requirements on the website already. Um, so this is already something that's being implemented in in chemistries that they consider to be higher risk for environmental dam or human um, health risks. Uh, so this is something that we all need to be aware of and come up to speed on very, very quickly uh, so that we don't risk being uh, reported um, or having to deal with any repercussions of of not meeting those. So uh, one of my plans uh, in my in my talk tomorrow is to go th walk through the website, just bring it up um, and just to kind of click around, show folks what's there, where to look for things and just kind of a just a quick and dirty overview of what that looks like and how to use it so that we don't have to just stumble around and, and read through legalese and EPA tutorials, which that's the dry part <laughs> that I'm trying to save everybody from. <laughs> we appreciate it. The herbicide um, EPA ESA that's coming out is over 900 pages itself. And that's just the herbicide portion of it. So thank you, Megan, for distilling it and telling us those important parts. <laughs> Into like a 30 minute presentation. So wish me luck. And if I'm talking too fast, you know, be sure to give me the, the sign. It's a lot of ground to cover, but it, it is really important. So I foresee more of these in the future as this comes becomes rolled out. Mm -hmm. So join in on December 5th for that and Brian Head's portion. So Brian Head is a pathologist with Penn State University. His presentation will cover all of the chemical classes and how the older materials compare to the newer materials that might be considered Cadillac materials that Megan mentioned of earlier, a good spray program, and also touch base on an organic option. So he's going to also talk about what to use under each phenological stage. I almost said phenological. And he will discuss the research trials that he ran this year to show a clear difference in powdery mildew control between programs of old and new materials. If the new materials don't really cost more, then there's no reason to stick with the old stuff, especially at a critical time for fruit protection. And he's going to go over all that for you. Other topics that he will address include timing of spray applications at critical growth stages, pesticide options, efficacy, resistance management, and answer grower questions about their current and potential spray programs that they may have put into place. So another part of our program on December 5th will be talking about the spotted lanternfly as an invasive species. We all in our area know that it's creeping closer and closer. There is an established population in Buffalo, New York, and also below Erie, Pennsylvania, sort of bookending our region, cutting through with rail. So we know that rail and it's a very good hitchhiker, this invasive species. So it, there's railway that cuts through our vineyards. And there's also um, like the New York State Thruway, lots of expressways that cut through our vineyard that allow this bug to easily jump into one of our places. So it, we've always said it's not if, but when this bug gets here and it's getting closer and closer. So now we have Dr. Ermon Vargas, who is the New York State IPN grape coordinator. He is part of the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program team as well. And he's on this call. He, we introduced him earlier in last week. So I'm gonna have Ermon talk a little bit about what his beginning programming, knowing that this bug is in our area, what his plans are. That's gonna be part of the talk on December 5th, but why don't you give him a little teaser? Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yes, um, there is uh, something that we can discuss about uh, invasives. In this case, it's an invasive pest um, getting into the continental U.S. and spreading around. Too many things that we don't know. Too many things that we are not sure about in relation to biology, ecology, and um, pest management. But there is one thing that we know, and that is a general thing for all invasives. They tend to to extend the range of expansion. And that is what is going on. Like, uh, that is like, uh, what is going on in Buffalo. It's, it's a spot that we have there, but it's for sure expanding to different areas. We are not sure uh, how much of that population will be here very soon. I mean, I'm talking about Western New York, but we know that is, as Jennifer was saying, it's not a question of if, but it's a question of when. So with all the effort that has been implemented in Pennsylvania, we have some um, information that we can discuss, that we can read about it. But we also want to know 
what we could be doing here once this pest is extending its range and start attacking grapes. So what we want to, to share is like a, some ideas about what we could be doing in relation to that expansion for our New York, uh, New York uh, growers. So the idea is basically to, to complement our uh, proposal of, of, of like a, an extension uh, guideline with all the questions that you as a grower may have for us, and we can address those in that extension document. That is also the idea, no having only a, a general like a flyer explaining different things, but also like a, something that we can consult via web, like a very, very pragmatic, very, very like a, a goal oriented, like a concise based on those questions and also based on what we can be doing with the pest. So too many things that we we uh, still don't know, for instance, uh, as we are just discussing the idea of uh, uh, regulations about pesticides, we don't know still if if using uh, any kind of pesticide will be even um, increasing the the problem. Why? Because sometimes in invasives, the natural nat the natural um, enemies, the na the native uh, natural enemies are the ones taking care of those invasives. So we, for instance, if we start spraying uh, any kind of pesticide, we could be even increasing the chances of the pest becoming a serious problem in, in the crop. So too many things that we need to, to, to address, too many things that we still don't know, but we got to do something while we are getting this uh, expansion and um, like, uh, invasive in our, in our area. So that is more like, a, uh, like a, as we were uh, discussing with uh, Megan and Jennifer, they were like a, more like a, collecting those questions, collecting those uh, concerns and trying to address those in a very like a interactive uh, material that we can continue increasing. And it's like also, as we were also discussing, we don't want something that is just static or like uh, established. We want something that is dynamic that we can continue building on in relation to the knowledge that been, is being produced because every day we got more information about uh, these, um, these uh, pests. So we want that to, and of course, uh, growers and concerns and ideas are more than welcome for December the 5th. Thanks, Herman. We really look forward to seeing that. And we are so thankful that you have joined the team and the fight for the spotted lanternfly in our region. So that's an overview of what you can get from our podcast or I don't want to call it a webinar because you will be able to interact. So we're going to have a Zoom meeting where you can interact, ask, ask questions. It is worth credit for both Pennsylvania and New York for recertification, pesticide applicator license recertification credits, but you must register. And in order to get those credits, you have to register at lergp.cce.cornell.edu. Click on the events page and the registration link is there for you. There's a $25 fee for that registration for this particular program. But for those of you who are looking for those elusive core credits in PA, we think it's worth it. Plus helping you get all the research-based background to help formulate your spray program for the coming year is extremely important. Does anybody Friend have anything to add? Yes, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say, just in a friendly reminder, if you are participating um, for the sake of credits, you will be required to attend the full sessions. Um, we will be, we we are obligated by the DEC and the PDA um, to check attendance and ask a few questions um, throughout the presentation, uh, just to make sure that folks are, are engaged and paying attention um, throughout, the, throughout the webinar, just in case you aren't familiar with the format or haven't participated in something like that before. Thank you for that reminder. So again, that's December 5th, next Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We hope to see you there. If you have any questions or suggestions for future, future podcasts, please leave a comment below if you are viewing this on YouTube, or you can always email any one of us and we can get information to you. We hope that you join us next week and that you have a, a fantastic week moving forward. Have a great day, everyone.